Drill 92.3, LA's new home for hip-hop, bootleg Kev, Damage. Of course, shout-out to my brother, Dre Sinatra. We got a guest in the building, a legend, man. One of my favorite MCs of all time is here. Wow. Merce! What up, though? What's up, man? Man. New just, album. New yeah, album. New, new album. album. A Strange Journey into the Unimaginable. Out on my 40th birthday, March 16th. My G, that is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting old. I'm. F yeah, I just turned 31. Gosh, man, slow down. Yeah, right? Well, yo, happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, and the album, it, you know, I saw you posted up a, a tweet on your gram that this album was not made with a bunch of yes men and, and weed smoke. Yeah, and nah, in man. The nah, man. <laughs> and does that mean that previous albums were made that way? No, it's just that's how <laughs> rap albums are. I see so, like, so many people getting props and putting on Instagram like... I'm like, y'all, all y'all talk about is how many women you got. Every time I see you on the gram, it's just a bunch of dudes and a bunch of smoke, and y'all look like y'all stank, and y'all not having no fun, and nobody's focused, and everybody's just trying to get away from their girlfriend and hang out at the studio. Like, yeah, man, like, uh, dude, that is true. That hits that hits the, the the nail on the head right there because i think that that is half of coming to the studio getting away from your girl and yeah, i didn't some, know that until i got some on cool shit happens yeah I, yeah I, I didn't know that until i got on a major label and my manager used to be like merce doesn't smoke merce doesn't drink and then producers stopped wanting to work with me like oh man I, oh he's not gonna be my excuse damn i'm at work baby not really so this is what your fourth or fifth project was strange fourth project was strange pretty good you're good with yours man yeah you, you should get a job here man. i mean come on man sheesh that is that's including merz day yeah including merz day um so this project you're working with is a, a, a producer yeah so it's text producer okay seven seven who's, who's amazing who's yeah. been doing strangers music forever he's Every incredible I, I was joking when i was like man what you got like 500 beats on strangers music? he's like oh, more like 750 and i was like well, okay seven it really imp it impressed me when he like i like when he started producing for ritz because like he like did ritz's sound like like better than anybody else like like it yeah, was that's yeah it was he's wild. amazing so i mean we've been wanting to work together he has a, he has an ill story because he has a son who's he's going to drum lessons mm -hmm. and back in the day before we met his son was going to drum lessons and uh he brought in a tech nine cd and told the drum teacher like my dad did these beats i want to learn to play to these beats and he's like it was a tech nine cd and, and his and his teacher was like this isn't real hip-hop Oh, and then wow. he gave it, his son, he gave Seven Son a Merch for President CD and said, take this to your dad and tell him this is real hip-hop oh. and learn these songs. And I was like, wow. Oh. But, um, yeah, so we've been wanting to work with each other for a long time, and we finally got to do it. And, uh, yeah, How many songs? 14 songs. We did about 24. We took the best 14. Or he, I let him run the whole show because I think that a lot of other artists um, – kind of direct him and I just wanted him to have a project he felt proud of that's why I put him on a cover of course like, I'm trying to bring him out of the mm -hmm. shadows no because like, he's definitely been in the shadows yeah yeah and I'm like bro like you're a legend like you need to Low get key. this like you've done a lot of t the greatest independent rapper in the world you've done 90% of his production which it says a lot so you need to get out here and get yours I'm curious like you've done you know some of my favorite projects ever were the felt projects and and obviously the 316 self with ninth wonder um what is the difference between working with someone like ninth on a full project and and then somebody new like seven is there you know i think they're really similar everybody I work with in between has been kind of different but ninth and seven are good so talented that i just let them fly the ship and they get me like right. seven is kind of learning me but um ninth ninth really knows knows me and i think seven is really the closest to that right and so i trust them and yeah man i think we got some great leadership but it's always up to the people i told Seven. seven's really proud of this album which i'm like a legendary producer is proud of the right, work right. but i was like it's never up to you it's up to the people 100 percent, man uh the whole strange music thing man it's such it's such an like i always just tell tech like how how amazing it is it's what he's doing in this music industry with like the type of artist he works with and even like like you said like his music is just so like it's just so distinct and so yeah. unique and he's thriving and, he, and it, it just seems like it's getting bigger and bigger um being a peg on that label like you know being a member of that label like what does that mean to you man like and what what have you learned because you're an independent legend yourself when it comes to all the independent music you've released and pay dues festival and just everything you've done over the last 20 years 15 years what did you learn from strange that maybe you didn't necessarily have beforehand man that's, i'm still learning working with seven i'm learning a lot um touring with tech i learned so much like I, he's been through things like marital things he's been real public about right 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 he so has, as right? i was going through my divorce he was a wealth of information and i'm one of the few artists aside from chris calico and i think maybe cut calhoun way back in the day that 
was allowed to ride on the bus with Tech. Mm-hmm. So I was with Tech every day. Oh, so you were on the you were actually on the bus. On the bus. On his bus. With with the bag. Like, you know, he was, you know, he was so, you know, and he's such an approachable, kind person. But I would just, you know, he would hear me on calls and be like, bro. Like he understood no, exactly. For sure. I mean, he just wrapped his divorce up after like Yeah, exactly. So we were however many years. I was starting mine, he was rapping and he was like, you know, and he was incur- and like it would hit, seeing him go through it, I was like, I need to go ahead and just handle my business right now. Right. You know, because it's, it's really, people don't understand, like, for me to, to get a divorce, I had to make time to go back to Arizona. Like, I was living back in L.A. You were living in Tucson, right? He, yeah, I was living in Tucson, With, but I moved back to L.A., right. so it, I had to go back to Tucson in between shows, in between recording, to go to court to get everything done. Right, damn. So it's, you know, but seeing what tech and so many other people in the industry have been through, I'm like, it's better to just to finish it out and handle just my business. Just get it done, yeah. And, um, you know, just having someone I could talk to about things like that. That's important. Um, was, you know, so I I could learn a lot of things. A, like that's like that's like a experience that like if you know if you got somebody who could relate or that has been through that, that's like you really just if you're going through that, you want somebody to talk to. Yeah, and he and he knew it. It wasn't like, you know, if a guy that works as a plumber, no disrespect, but he doesn't understand my life. I don't understand right. his life. So his divorce is way different from mine. No, 100%. But Tex was so similar and he was so kind and so open. And um, so wise. That's dope. So I could have been. I learned. I learned a lot from watching him perform every night. I think Kendrick recently said it. A lot of people will say like he's probably the you greatest know, live rapper I ever. I always tell people that. I, you know, you're up there though. Oh, thank you. I man. remember the first time I seen you perform. Uh, it was at the clubhouse in Tempe. Oh wow! And I and, forget what and album. Moses was there. Jesus and. and Way back Were you, then. It, was it a Coldplay song that you would play oh, during your yeah. set? <laughs> and you did a fucking backflip or some shit. <laughs> but I was already like a diehard fan, and I was like, this shit is incredible. I remember <laughs> that shit, bro. Like, But no, Tech, to me, like, what? just the precision and then the fact that he raps so fast and he's not rapping over a track and just the coordination, like, with all his movements. And then... The last tour, did you see the last tour where he came out with the screens and No, I missed it. I was working. It was I was so on the crazy. road and going through some shit. So I man, I, I watched it on TV. I watched it on Instagram. Right. I wanted to because I've seen a lot of tech shows. I oh, probably yeah, me too, yeah. So I'm but like, that, that I one, wanted to catch it. I always thought to myself, like, man, I don't know if like I don't know what tech's gonna do next. But that last tour, I was like, fuck. Like he did. Man. And he thinks about it. He obsesses about it. Like it's important to him to 100%. outdo. Like a lot of people are riding on their legacy. And he is, and that's another thing that's encouraging to me of being with him. I'm like, as a fan, this dude is still doing some of his best shows and making some of his best music, and he's approaching 50. That's true. So I grew up thinking, man, well, by the time I get 35, long, I'm gonna be how done. How long am I gonna be able to do this? Yeah, exactly. And, and him, Chuck D, E40, like there are people I've seen. Like Chuck D, when I see him do Public Enemy to this day, I'm like, right. Even like you said, E40, like E40, E40, like yeah. E40 still some putting of his, out slappers like yeah. for the youth. Like, and I'm like, I have. I said a thousand a day, but I probably have eight hundred E forty songs on my phone at all times. I mean, he drops a triple album every like. So like, nine I have months. all those albums, and I know that he's getting better. It's not like oh, I'm just a casual listener. Right. Like, oh, he sounds the no, same. He's, still, he's, he's getting better. Like yeah. he's still making me go oh every yeah. album. That's crazy. So I'm like, okay, I got a lot. Of, uh, even in Slug from Atmosphere as well. It's like someone that's you know a few years older than me. That I'm like, okay, we we could keep doing. It. I mean, I just Royce is about a year older than me, but. Yeah, Royce like, just put a freestyle out today. It was crazy. Man, Flex. that guy is so good. Like yeah, I was listening amazing. to Layers today. I'm still not over that album. True. Like, so I'm, I'm, yeah, we're here. We're supposed to be still doing this. Um, you, you've been doing the, the, the going on the other side of things with Hip Hop DX thing. You know, yeah, on the commentary side. Yeah. I, um, I, I'm, I'm curious. Like, how, how do you like it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I recently had to let that go, man. So you're not doing that anymore. I, I got maybe a couple more episodes in me. I probably shouldn't say that, but uh. At this point, like I gotta focus on the record. Yeah, it's hard to be a rapper and be researching other rap because I write, produce, and direct that all by myself. So I'm, I was gonna not, say not, like, say, no, I'm sorry, produce, direct, wrote a clip. James does a lot of producing, direct, but I write and research most of like 99 percent of it all by myself. Then we don't have a teleprompter, so I have to memorize the whole thing. And it takes about 48 hours to get one. For I was me and James hoping to get when Joe, Joe Budden hung it up, I'm like, man, I hope they get Merce to go to New York. Yo, and do I was that like, shit. yo, I was like, I'll take that. Because you would kill it. Yeah, I'm just not as sensational, man. Like, I'm more. But I'm not try- I feel like you're honest, though. Yeah, I'm not and trying to be incendiary, but I'm going to tell you my opinion and then I'm going to back it up with a right. lot of history. And, um, you know, like Method Man, Sadat X slid in my DMs the other night, like, bro, I just saw that real hip hop versus fake hip hop. Like, as an OG, I just want you to know, like, I admire you and I appreciate what you're doing and I agree with you. 
I think you know it's, it's nice to have older heads respect what I do and be and not be bitter. I am curious because you you talked earlier about the the, the sevens um, teacher giving his son a uh, your CD as yeah. being a real hip hop thing, and I remember growing up like you know as a as a young kid being around dilated peoples and like uh, I went from like being a hardcore no limit records masterpiece like DMX fan <laughs> like all like the hot shit when I was like twelve. And then I went to my first dilated show. And then I went to LA and I hung out with the Licks. Oh, like wow. I'm fucking 13 years old. Wow. Like like craziness, right? And and then I got introduced the first dilated show I ever went to, the song that like I always tell everybody like kind of changed my life low key and like made me like start digging like through like all the five mic albums. It's not even on a five mic album, but when I heard the KRS one step into a world, which was kind of like his commercial record. Yeah. But when I heard Him that puffy. Fuck, when I heard that beat. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this? What have I been missing? Like, oh my God. But, That's a classic. But I remember, like, from that point forward, I was like one of like the hip hop snob guys who was like super like, man, that shit is whack. That shit is corny. Like, but, <laughs> it's not real hip hop. Right. I was one of those guys for, you know, probably like up until, you know, my sophomore year in high school. But but I, I think that like what's kind of cool about the internet is like there's definitely a lot of bullshit. And, and a lot of the, the bullshit is what's kind of rising to the top popular popularity wise but i also think like like it's okay to be like a fan of like all kinds of hip-hop like you don't get like you used to get kind of judged for that kind of thing back in the yeah day. now it's like i think the invention of like um, you used to not be able to be a Merce fan and a jay-z fan yeah like, and i remember was, how I was big both. of a deal it was that kanye got talib Kweli and freeway on a song together do you remember that that's like, huge that was like but but nowadays like freeway's like doing whole albums with jake one and shit like you yeah know what i mean like and then you get rich the kid and kendrick lamar right like it's just it's, it's like and then no one thinks about it they're just like oh that's dope yeah if it was 2001 people would be like what the it's sold fuck? out why? But it's funny that you say step into the world because that was one of the first things Puffy, when Puffy got on the remix. Paris one on the same song. Like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? Yeah, like he he kind of started that. Like, okay, these worlds are coming together, and it's all hip hop. Like Molly Crew and the Beatles do the same type of music. They don't do the same type of music, but it's all rock and roll. hundred percent. And no. Little Yachty and Royce the Five Nine do the same type of music. Out of all these young kids, or I should I don't want to I, I hate the SoundCloud rapper tag because I think a lot of these kids have moved past that. But out yeah. of, out of this this young generation that's popping the SoundCloud rappers, if you will, is there anybody who you kind of fuck with? Man, so the little homies put me up on a um, a song yesterday called by um, piped up by um, Comethazine. Oh my God, DJ Head just got into a little beef with this guy. Really? Because DJ Head called this song trash. Oh, oh that shit go. Uh, yo, that shit go. And, and I guess it really hurt the guy's feelings. But I. I haven't heard the record, but I, it's so funny. That shit, it's like he's like he's like a kind of. He's from out here. No, I don't no. know where he's from. Oh, um, but the videos, the, the video for Piped Up, is, I think is in uh, in New York. It's moving. Someone told me he's from St. Louis. I don't know, but he's a. Uh, it's like Jewel Santana meets designer. I mean, Not that those two needed to meet. They, they didn't need ever, to meet. But, they did but uh, I like it, man. It's cute. I, it's like it's fun. I ain't mad at it. But yo, if, if DJ had calling this guy song trash. Hurt his feelings. This should this should bring him right back. Yeah, man. Nah, keep doing what you're doing, bro. It's, it's fun, thing. man. But like, I like him. I like I like Jaden. Jaden Smith oh, is going to be the future of rap to me. Him, I think him and Willow Smith are the future of humanity. But quite, that's, quite a other, that's a whole other that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation. But, but um, yeah, I've been here listening to his stuff for a while. But uh, this he stepped into his own with this icon. Yeah, he did. Pay, Sired. Um, um, last year, Paytu's got announced. Yeah, I was excited. I was like, shit, it's coming back. Yeah, I was waiting. Yeah. Cause you know, rock the bells and pay dues has been gone like kind of, you know. Yeah. It's been what three or four years. Yeah, it's been definitely. a while. Um, and then it got canceled. Yeah. So what happened? I never wanted to do another pay dues. I never want to do another pay dues. Um, people used to always ask me like, what happened? What happened? Um, some unfortunate business went down. No, nobody being shady. Just stuff didn't work out. And um, uh, pay dues went out on its biggest year ever. We sold thirty thousand tickets. No, I remember. Yeah. And after that. Things went bad with Rock the Bells, which adversely affected the pay, money and pay, pay dues. So I had to not do it anymore. But at that point, it had gotten so big that I didn't really enjoy it anymore. It had become a burden. And I say this all the time, and people get in their feelings, I don't give a fuck. Um, but when I started pay dues, I was selling 70,000 records a year almost. Oh, yeah. Independently. And every year I threw pay dues, the more my album sales went down, and the more I saw this whole West Coast scene, whether niggas want to give me credit or not, Build it, build up, which is what I wanted. Right, but I should have focused on myself 
Because Maybe, but I enjoy. Maybe you I, spread yourself too thin. Yeah, and I, I'll never change it for the world because I had some great times and I did. I did something that's bigger than my name or that's separate from my name. It's legendary and it's, because paid dues mm-hmm. is legendary, and there's not many rappers that can say that. Everything they do is attached to their name or their brand. True. This is something that stood on its own because of the talent of so many other amazing individuals, and I was able to give back to my community. So I'm not complaining or whining but so i recognized that i was like i never want to do this again so they kept trying to throw money at me and i was like i don't want to do it i don't want to do it it's not for the right reasons y'all don't want to do it for the right reasons i want to do it for the culture and for the kids and then it became tyler's festival was amazing i thought i thought the lineup for pay dues the one that just got announced last year i thought it was a little like i don't know i feel like like you like i feel like if it was for the kids, it was definitely like a, like for me, lineup. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there was like a lot, like a lot of the young up and coming cats weren't on there. It was like, yo, I fucking love Freddie Gibbs. I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna go see Gangsta Gibbs. I'm gonna go see fucking Raekwon and Ghost. Like, but I feel like it was definitely if you're competing against Tyler's lineup and you're competing. Yeah, against- and I don't think when that's my thing is like I don't want to. I didn't want to compete. I just think that you know. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like this in this industry. I'm not going to name a whole bunch of situations, but I've been in this situation multiple times where people see you doing something and then they say, hey, come do this for me. And then they want to tell you how to do it. Right. And so with pay dues, when I brought it back the, and, you know, the investors wanted to have their say. And I'm like, you shouldn't have a say. This is not what you guys do. Just bring the bag. I, yeah. I built this. Yeah. And, and like you, for the record, you, I, I saw a little B for the first time at pay dues. Yeah. Like, like you, you always like have the young hot dudes on the show like, and i'm like let just let me do what i do because you know whatever would like you know as rock the bells went over the, the sales were going mm-hmm. down pay dues was in the black I feel we like never you guys lost never got, a year you guys never got greedy yeah and that's the whole thing is like yeah. i was always and i was always trying to find something new mm-hmm. it wasn't you know i it was starting like you know well i guess for lack of a better example one of the best examples um, is Black Hippie started out like going on? I remember that at two two o'clock in the afternoon. I remember that, I re- and they I ended bought the headline. hoodie there. I remember that hoodie. That was... I mean, and that's like growth, and like you don't see that no, for on sure. any other festival. You don't see someone go from like year to year. Opening, you could see opening it. to headlining, and that's what I was trying to build. And I was like, when we do pay dues, we're gonna have to start smaller again and build it back up. It's not gonna be. And I was throwing off. The, you know, people invest like, let's do Young Thug. Let's do. I'm like, no, bro. Right. Fuck no. And so I had to make some compromises. And then I had to stand behind those compromises like I wasn't compromises and defending this shit just to protect the investors. Right. Just so that when I go to the Dodger game, motherfuckers didn't ask me a million times when pay dues. It's like when people ask me about felt, like, I don't give a fuck about felt or pay dues. Like, thank you. During that was past. that. That was it. It happened. Like, people don't ask when the next... If everybody asked Jimi Hendrix when the next Woodstock was, like, it was, either you there, you were there, well, you were Well, it's good. It means that people, you know, you you you, you left your, your like, your, like, the felt albums meant a lot to a lot of people. Yeah, no, and I'm glad they did. And pay dues meant a lot. A lot. To a lot and of I people. was like, and it meant a lot to me. Yeah. But it's like, it is what it is. And I think that Tyler's doing a great job of carrying For that sure. on. I don't know who people could compare to felt, but there's new people doing new things, and... As I when I was coming up, all the old heads never made space for me. They never transitioned. They never moved on. Like Black Eyed Peas going from an underground group signing Ruthless Records as At Band Clan, then Black Eyed Peas, and then going pop. That made room for people to come under them mm-hmm. and do similar things. But when you just stay at one, you know what I mean? The Roots not touring like they were touring 200 days Made a year. a lot of room for a lot yeah, of people to tour. and going on to Fallon and evolving mm-hmm. and no one calling him sellout and Black Thought still proving that he's one of the greatest one ever. One of the illest. But making space for the next generation and that's what I want to do. Like when I met, you know, Blue or all these people, I wasn't like, yo, hey, I was like, come do pay dues and like, I'm signing to Warner Brothers. You fill that space where I was. You in exile, what you guys do mm-hmm. is similar, different, but similar but to similar, what me yeah. and Ninth Wonder did. Do it, bro. Right, right, right. And I'm gonna step out of the way and try to do something else and i think that's the way it should be so i'm out of the way so that tyler could create right um and i have nothing like i said i have nothing i'm just thankful tyler puts me on and it gives me tickets every year like i've performed at our future carnival twice a lot of dudes that i helped out and gave festival shots to never look they, back they you know what back, i mean yeah you know whether it's you know noah james curtis king like all these people some of them look out some of them don't and i don't expect anything all i expect you to do is do better than me that's what this the dude one of the dudes who started hurley 
told me that. He's like, I don't understand hip hop. Like everybody's competing. He's like, I'm giving you this opportunity, signing you to Hurley and signing you. He's what I got my deal from Warner Brothers. That like, I'm giving you this because I want you to be richer than me. And if I can't help you be richer and more successful than me, then I fail. And I think that that's always been my thing. And you don't have to help me out or look back. But I'm thankful when someone like Tyler takes time out of their busy schedule to say, yo, yeah, throw Merce and Grouch on this. That's dope. And then throw Living Legends on this. Like, he didn't have, his fans don't give a fuck about us. Right, right, right. But it's dope. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I feel like it's important, like, that's where Tyler differs from a lot of these young cats, where it's like, it's, a, it's really about, res like, paying respect and, like, Yo, if you got a whole bunch of these young kids, like, try to expose Merce to a whole new audience, if you can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's the right thing to do. And I met, like, I, and I still, like, I learned about Brockhampton, like, getting Brock ready to see, to see Odd Future Carnival. And then I fell in love with Brockhampton at the carnival because it was, like, everybody. We were, t I was so excited. They're like the L.A. Wu-Tang. Yeah. Like, I was, for real. And they killed it, man. They're amazing. And... And who's other like Matt DeMarco, the mm -hmm. singing guy? Hilarious. Like, me and my wife were sitting out there. I was like, who the fuck is this old-ass white dude? He looked like a French mime. <laughs> like, I was like, yo, who the f But it was ill. Like, that's what a festival is about, man. And I don't need... Pay dues doesn't need... To so, like you said, there's the haters. They're like, fuck Tyler and fuck Carnival. I'm not going. And then and wait for pay dues to come back. Yeah, they're tripping. Yeah, just rock with it, man. Yeah, like, fuck all this young bullshit. And then there was even the other Rhyme Fest. There's other shit. Yeah, I mean, Rolling Loud, I know Branch out from Miami. They just did San Bernardino, yeah, which was like, crazy. Yeah, like, man. Support these just people. It's fun, man, at the end of the day. Um, and for the record, there's been some pretty crazy, like, random festivals. Like, there was some shit in Long Beach that had Wu-Tang and Snoop and Daz and a bunch. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, this is oh, yeah, it's going crazy. <laughs> been, yo, the festivals, they're, they're popping up like crazy. But um, you, it's crazy that you've been a part of such, like, historical movements like like you started off early on like with the Def Juck shit yeah which like in its own right just had a grip on the backpack shit for so long and then obviously fast forward through you being independent the the Merge 316 the Warner Brothers deal strange music um what like which era of your career do you like do you consider your golden years or have you hit your golden years yeah have you hit your peak yet like what what part of your career do you look back on and be like man is it the 316 albums? Is it man? I I never, I never really liked any of it. I hated 316 when it came out. That's crazy. I or I, when I turned it in, and LP and Ninth were like, "This is the best thing you ever done." And I was like, "This is garbage." That's crazy. And, uh, so man, I'm always trying to get better. So I I don't know. Do you um, still talk to LP? Occasionally, he's quite busy. How crazy is that, right? That like LP, like a Second godfather, win. a godfather of this yeah. rap shit, is now. He's got. He's more popular than he's ever. He's in. The, he's in Gears of War. Yeah, people. I mean, he was in. Well, yeah, I don't know some other. Like he's everywhere. And like, people are like, the jewels, this success. It, it's a and old. He's older than me. He's my big homie. Like he put right. me on. No, yeah, yeah. And to get he, young, he signed you directly. Like, yeah, like, like he, yeah. We were out at strip clubs and Gavin and like doing things and like we became friends. And he's like heard my music and was like, yo, come on. Like CoFlow was. We did a show at CoFlow at Rocksteady. And then we met them there. I gave him my tape, and I was like, you're going to be in San Diego doing Gavin with us. Check that out. I checked you guys out. He checked me out. And he, like, quoted bars from my right, shit. He's right, like, right. I listened to you on a plane. You're nice. And then we just became friends and started, like, hanging out. And he just, like, so many underground heads were so nerdy. And he was, like, someone like me that liked to drink, yeah, smoke, like to fuck and go to some fun. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yo, like, all right, you're not, like, a stuck-up bag. Like, you're a Brooklyn kid. Like, right, right, you're right. A real you're not hip hip-hop like, nerd. Was yo, like, we've been in, like, fist fights. And, like, he, right. like he's a real dude. Like, so I was like... We just became really good friends, and uh, it's and then, ill to me that my big homie, to get young kids to understand I'm important, I'd be like, oh, the guy from Run the Jewels, yeah, I was signing his label. And i oh, okay. Yeah, I got musical him. Like, like you know, 15 I, years old, yeah. and I got to use LP That's as so a crazy. reference because you get Run the Jewels, but you have no idea who Mercy Ninth Wonder are. <laughs> that shit's wild, man. So, I'm, And you have no idea what Company Flow is. You have no idea. What no Def, clue Def, what any Def, of that is. I'm like, he used to have a record label called Def It was Def. pretty important. But um, yeah, man, I'm so. Me and I were talking about it the other day. Like we were so thankful for that opportunity. Uh, what's like I, this album comes out on your birthday? Yeah. Um, which is what the 16th? The 16th, three sixteen. Which is uh, a very important number, obviously, throughout your career. Um, is there gonna be? A, you, you, I, I know you. You just talk, said you just talked with Ninth recently. I mean, you guys gonna put out another uh, another three sixteen? I don't think so, man. I think that uh, I think Ninth Wonder likes Rhapsody a lot more than he likes me. I mean, musically. 
Rhapsody's doing her thing. Man. Her album's incredible. Just, yeah, like another one. You know what I'm saying? I just want to be going on the record that she was on the final adventure. And I said she was my favorite rapper back in oh oh what a twenty ten. Right. No one cared. But um I'm glad y'all are fucking listening now. Layla's wisdom is amazing. It's an man. incredible project. She's grown so much and she's she's phenomenal. But um yeah, so I think she she stole my producer. I don't think that me and Ninth were gonna I mean if we do something I think for Ninth I was always like a like a getaway project. Like I can, he I mean, does, we don't really understand each other. We're brothers, but like Right. He, he got different types of cats. Yeah, he don't fuck with me like that. Like we I know his mother, like we're family. It's deeper than rap. But and we do music together because people like it. But like when we sit down, like I'm a fucking weirdo to him. Yo, when you did the freestyle that broke the you were like freestyling on Twitch for how long was it? Oh yeah. I was doing karaoke. So the Or no, you, you were know, rapping. Rap you were just karaoke. rapping nonstop. Right? Yeah, rapping nonstop for twenty six hours. Okay. And so you were just rapping. So I did three every hours of my memorized. three hours of my stuff and then three hours of other people's stuff. And then back and forth. Yes, yeah, just repeat on six hour loop. That is crazy. For twenty six hours. What video game were you playing throughout this? No, I was no games. I was reading Rap Genius to make sure I didn't forget the lyrics. Oh shit! But then, yeah, and then like getting the massages in between every two hours. We did it for a Boost Mobile campaign, so they 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 get made and had a masseuse on call for me twenty four hours, all kind of vitamins and shit. And Mr. Lin from Company Flow. Yo, that's crazy. Did, Shout did out the Mr. Lin. He he did because we had to. You couldn't have the intro. You could no four bar. Yo, I I had to be boom boom nonstop. Boom. So rapping. I had to go from the end of like um was a. Who's your mouth climb? A and R plays the legend. He don't looking for a student tie rap that's cleaning Cons- in a bar. Continuously. So raw, I'm gonna give it to you with no trivia. That's crazy. All I caught it had to be cut. Boom, 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 that's boom. That's crazy. So it, there was no break. Poof. Yeah, it was crazy. I'll never do that again. Yes, yeah, probably a, a smart move. Well, look, the album comes out on the 16th. Cannot wait to hear it. Any other MCs on the album? Yeah, XV, who used to rap Yo, with what Seven. Yo, XV? He's back. He's From on, Wichita. Yep. Bro, that's my guy. And he he put out that Zero Heroes album. Yeah. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. He when he was working with Just Plays, oh my God, I'm so happy to hear his name. Yeah. So he's he's on it. Um the song's called Whiskey and Patron. Um oh, fucking X V. Wow. Tech Nine, my first song on Tech Nine on same way. I haven't had tech on my album ever since I've been on Strange. It's my last album. I finally got him. This on. is your last album with Strange. My, um my my deal is done. Yeah, whoever who knows what's gonna happen next. Because I know Rich I'm, just had, did his last album, yeah, and I know so he's kind of doing this independent. Yeah, we're free agents. Yeah, it's both free agents. Free agents. Um, what else is the, Who else is on there? Um, Fashion and Prof are on a new okay. song, single, G Lollipops. Um, Tech Nine. Oh, John Gibbs, who's from Oceanside, California. John um, San Diego area. He's a, he's amazing. Um, Propaganda, who's a Christian rapper. My homeboy from um, West Covina is on it. I'm just excited I'm trying, to hear oh, XV's um, name. Pat, Patrick Page from the internet plays some bass on it. Dope. Um, my cousin Chris Bowers play piano. I think that's it. I think musician. We had a lot of musicians. Go support it, man. Yeah, it's an amazing album, man. It was. Um, and this might be the last album you ever have that has that's in a Best Buy, huh? Yeah, last my last album in Best Buy. Because so Best Buy's done years, with CDs, right? Yep. As of July, so 15 years in Best Buy. Thank you, Best Buy. Um, Go buy the physical I remember, album. I remember telling LP when he put out my first record, like that was commercially strip. I was like, bro, if you get me in the Best Buy circular, like the Sunday yeah, ad, yo, that I'm was on. the move. Yeah, I was, when if I saw my in album the in there, I was in the ad. I was like, I'm on. What the fuck? Like, Still to this day, I remember getting that ad every Sunday just because at because the, then you kind of like there was no internet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and see what was coming out. Like shit, what's coming out? Oh shit. You waiting Unless for Tuesday. Like, yeah, because a lot of times those source ads would be hella inaccurate. Yeah. <laughs> like, the Come source ad will say one day and the shit gets pushed back. Yeah, like, push, push. Oh, man. So you don't know it's real until it's in the uh, Best Buy. Until it's in that Best Buy. So it's coming out, out So yeah, Tuesday. go to the record store actually buy an album for the last time almost ever. Are you touring with Tech on this this next tour? Or are you doing no, your own tour? Waiting, waiting on the baby, so I, I got to stay home. Coming. But this fall, I'm trying to work on something with Open Mike Eagle. And we're both gonna go out together and uh Congratulations to your Jaguars for being relevant again, by the way. Hey, just when I was about to try to give up, I gotta eventually switch. I live in Inglewood. I gotta switch to being a Chargers fan eventually. But I've been down to you know, I've been too long, long too long with the Jaguars too. I mean, man. And everybody's stop sleeping on Blake Bortles, bro. You think Blake Bortles is He's truth, man. Okay. He hasn't had a great receiver ever. People shit Alan on him. Alan Hearns ain't bad. But what is he, second round pick, third round pick? What was the other guy? It was Alan Hearns and the other Alan guy. Alan Robinson. They yeah, were both hurt yeah. most of the year this year. This is true. We had to depend on Mark Lee, Marquise Lee. Shout out Marquise Lee from Inglewood. Y'all but, definitely got to get a... If you guys he's never had a premier receiver. Weapons. Imagine that. Like, imagine if he just had one premier receiver. <laughs> I mean, Not that our back. guys aren't got good. Got running back now. 
Finally, and no one believed that because he never mind. I go do too nah, football. No, we ain't going into football like that. Sorry, but so guys. here, Jaguars, man. Thank you, man. We appreciate but it. That is something to What's be going on? Don't and I hope the Cardinals don't get Kirk Cousins. <sighs> that would be the worst idea ever. I don't know. I just hope we don't get Keenan out. Or what's not Keenan? What's a uh, Case Keenum? Yeah, no, you don't want him either. Don't want, you guys want uh, Nick Foles. I'll take Nick Foles. Yeah, Sign I heard that up. might happen for y'all. I, hey, man. I heard that might happen Sign for y'all. Sign me up for the Nick Foles, baby. Shout out to Merz. Go support the album. Uh, it's it's going to be amazing, as, as all his projects Yeah, March 16th, are. yeah. Like, if you've never given me anything for my birthday, if you've ever stolen an album, if you've ever been to pay dues, if you ever um, asked me when Felt 4 is coming out, go buy my fucking record, man. Go buy man. the album. Um, go support this guy. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's amazing. It's a... Uh, it's a real trip. It's some shit that you've never heard rappers talk about on there. Woo! And you um, talk about a lot of shit that I never hear rappers talk yeah, about. Yeah, so it's, um, you know, last year when Captain California, my last album came out, um, I had just finished with a divorce, beat a court case, was doing a separation from my son, and uh, I fell in love with the wonderful woman that's right here, and uh, she got pregnant, and after 40 weeks, our baby died in labor. Oh, shit. And I had to bury my newborn son, and uh, it fucked me up. Damn. Um, and I had reserved this release date on my birthday for three years. I was like, oh, I got to have this. It's my 40th birthday. I want to put out a record. And so Strange called me like, you still want to put out a record? We want you to. And I was like, fuck it. Like, I got a lot to say. You know what I'm saying? Because whether you're going through whatever kind of loss, like my loss was what it was. And, uh, you know, we're pregnant again. And we're expecting a baby around the same time. And life is crazy. But um, if I could get out and inspire someone and share my tragedy. And and, and the whole album's not dark. There's right. some fun. Like I said, XV's on there. We're talking about whiskey and Patron. And, you know what I mean? It's just ups and downs of life. We all go through it. We all got to get back up. And I just wanted to give my fans something extra. And I feel like as I get older, you know, I buried my stepfather, my father, mm-hmm. and my newborn son. I have a, I have a lot to talk a lot about. More and to a lot more um, so I'm thankful that I'm still relevant and have a career, and uh, this is my past, so I don't have to compete with young heads. I don't have to, like, I, I say what I have to say because of um, what I have to say, and it still helps people. So um, I'm just matters, great. I'm grateful, and I'm grateful for to Travis and Tech for the platform for the past four years and for pushing me to make this record. What is, you know, I don't I don't think there's not there's no club bangers, you know what I mean? Right, there's right, no right. singles, but um, you know, like you said, the SoundCloud kids, Cometas ain't got that cover. I, I gotta do me you and stay do, in my you lane. Do something for and us, as hip hop continues to expand, like I'm saying things that have never been said before, or I, I I haven't heard before. And uh so yeah, I'm I'm excited. Um and uh yeah, I hope that it, it helps and touches some people. Boom. Merce, go support it, man. It's real ninety two three. Boom.